Hello everyone, my name is Christine Murad and I'm a PhD student at the University of Toronto supervised by Dr. Cosman Montianu. Today I'll be talking to you about my paper about the barriers and opportunities to supporting VUI designers on the job. VUI interfaces are growing very quickly in the commercial market and becoming much more commonplace in our daily lives. As technology has advanced, the engineering capabilities of these interfaces have allowed voice user interfaces to become ubiquitous, finding themselves in people's homes, cars, appliances, etc. There is particularly a large presence in industry with Google Home, Amazon Echo Alexa, Siri, and more. However, most of the people currently tasked with building voice user interfaces or adding voice capabilities to existing technology are designers that are currently trained in developing graphical user interfaces. And this is becoming apparent with the ever existing usability issues that commercial VUI still face, according to previous research. While new positions are being created, such as conversation designer or voice chatbot designer, the majority of people in these positions are still primarily versed in traditional UI and GUI design due to how we currently train designers in HCI. We identified a gap in the understanding of VUI industry design today, both in the practices and experiences employed on the job. So the first question we aim to answer in the study was, what are the current experiences and practices that VUI industry designers employ on the job when ideating, designing, and testing VUIs for usability? Previous research has suggested that designers map their experience from traditional UI and GUI design over to VUI design, and that this may help make tools for VUI design more adaptable for new and transitioning designers. Therefore, our second research question was, do designers use previous experience and design practices from GUI design when they are designing for VUIs? Finally, Research has not delved deeply into the barriers that current VUI industry designers experience and their most pertinent needs for improving VUI design. Therefore, our third research question was, what are the barriers and needs of current VUI industry designers? So in order to do this, we conducted a large scale online questionnaire with 105 industry designers. 54 having conducted or are conducting VUI design. We explored the differences between general UI or GUI and VUI industry design and the barriers and needs of VUI industry designers. There were four main sections of our questionnaire. You'll notice that the latter three sections have two section names attached to it. For each section pair, besides section A of course, the questions within each of them were the same, but were focused on general UI design for the first section and focused on VUI design for the second. So our four sections were general demographics, general UI and VUI design experience, general UI and VUI design practices, and perceptions of general UI and VUI design. So just to illustrate what I mean by the section pairs, an example of questions in a section pair, in the first one, you may see, what do you do when you are first starting the development of a new interface? And in the second, you may see, what do you do when you're first starting the development of a new voice interface? We did this so that we could perform correlation analysis on equivalent types of questions in our analysis. So in our analysis, we collated the data in SPSS and performed frequency analysis and analyzed the percentage of responses of each question, since most questions were multiple choice where more than one option could be chosen. For questions where only VUI designer answers were relevant, we controlled for this before reporting the frequency. We also performed Spearman's correlation between responses for equivalent questions in general UI and VUI design sections, as I explained previously. We also identified the main barriers and needs that VUI industry designers experience. Now, the full details are in the paper, as there are many, 
but I will focus on highlighting our four main takeaways from the study that came out of answering the questions that we posed earlier. The first takeaway is VUI designers want to use guidelines, but may not find available ones adequate, making guideline development an immediate necessity. We found that there was a significant correlation between those who used GUI-based guidelines and those who also used VUI guidelines. This means that those who used GUI guidelines while designing for GUIs were likely also to use them when designing for VUIs. This shows that the need and desire to use guidelines for design is there for VUI design. However, we also see that even though there is a significant correlation, the general rate of VUI guideline usage is much lower than for GUI guideline usage. This suggests that existing VUI guidelines may not be adequate or may not be adoptable for VUI designers. We also found that only 32% of VUI design participants noted checking compliance according to design guidelines compared to the 60% that do for GUI guidelines in GUI design. This may suggest a lack of confidence in the validity of GUI design guidelines. This suggests developing and validating tools like design guidelines and patterns are immediately necessary in order to improve GUI design. Our second takeaway is current industry designers rely on their existing GUI experience when designing for VUIs, and we should leverage this experience when transitioning them from GUI to VUI design to improve adoptability. We found a significant correlation between the practices used for GUI and VUI design. Interviews, questionnaires, and user tests were the top practices used when ideating and developing both types of interfaces. However, as with the last point, these practices are used at a much lower rate for VUI design than they are for GUI design. We also found that designers use the same types of resources when beginning to develop a new UI and VUI, referring to existing UIs, referring to online resources, and speaking to colleagues. This supports previous research of ours that designers map their experiences from traditional UI and GUI design over to VUI design, and using this knowledge may make tools for VUI design more adoptable. The third takeaway is VUI industry designers want industry and academic training for VUI design, and this should be a focus for the immediate future. Lack of academic or industry training was selected as both one of the highest barriers to VUI design and one of the highest needs for VUI designers. This supports previous research we've conducted where we explored the lack of VUI design curricula in HCI education. While GUI design training has been developed, adapted, and validated many times over, the same has not been done for VUI design, which makes it difficult for new and transitioning VUI designers in industry. We are beginning to see more VUI design courses and workshops appear, both in industry and at conferences such as this one. We believe that the progress of developing courses such as these is important to focus on now, in order to help current and transitioning VUI designers in their training and understanding of the differences of designing for VUIs. And finally, the last takeaway is VUI industry designers want better digital prototyping tools, and the current ones are not being adopted, necessitating immediate development and adoption efforts for VUI prototyping tools. An interesting and prominent finding in our study was that there was a high rate of lack of established prototyping tools as a barrier to VUI design, and also a large need for developing digital prototyping tools. There's actually a decent number of well-known tools for prototyping VUIs and conversational dialogues, such as Dialogflow by Google and Voiceflow. And yet, participants selected that more and better prototyping tools are needed it may be that either current tools are relatively unknown to industry designers or are not satisfying industry prototyping needs, and this is something that needs to be explored further. There are many more details than I could ever fit into this talk, and the survey questions are also included in the supplementary materials, 
so I encourage you to take a look at the full paper for more detailed frequency and correlation analysis along with more discussion. Overall, we believe immediate future research should be focused on guideline and prototyping development and adoption and introducing academic and industry training curriculums in order to better support designers in the transition to voice interaction design. More work needs to be done and we are actively performing research that builds on these results. But we hope that these findings can help guide further and more in-depth research efforts to support VUI industry designers on the job. Thank you for listening.